I just love that you retweeted this giant uh, wages grow at the fastest pace in 21 years. And you just said, how many crises can this White House handle? <laughs> I mean, am I wrong that the, if you didn't watch Meet the Press, I will sum it up for you. Biden doomed once again. Yes. Yes. Presidency in crisis, everything wrong. Will the Supreme everything. Court nomination be a lifeline for his horrible doomed presidency? All oh, right. That right. Is, has the best economic record in 50 years. I mean, yeah. no, it's amazing that that headline was actually from the page one of the Wall Street Journal, uh, but they were they were certainly in the minority. And yeah, I just did a piece this morning about the, the coverage for the GDP announcement last week, uh, gross domestic product, uh, which is the most uh, the broadest um, way to measure the economy. This yeah. is the gold standard for how any president's uh, economic record is treated, it, you know, used to deal with job gains, unemployment rate wages, GDP, those were the metrics yeah. the media always used, except for Biden, because they're all through the roof. So the GDP was the highest since Reagan in 84. <sighs> uh, consumer spending was up the highest since uh, 1946. Uh, and, um, you know, three of the four network newscasts on Thursday did not cover the story. NBC Nightly News gave it one sentence. Um, yeah. And and so uh so the the press is so committed to the idea that the economy is bad for biden they really don't know what to do when the data comes through showing you know record gains and record and growth and isn't like it that. hilarious about you know ask one republican one tough question for once why don't we start with that <laughs> yeah i mean republicans are having the hardest time aren't they on running this economic record you just can't argue with it and they're, they're, you know, I, I mean, they don't know what to do. This economy yeah. is so good. They don't know how to spin it. I mean, right. I, even like you were saying, the bridge collapsing hours before Biden infrastructure visit, you said not one word in this piece about how Republicans overwhelmingly opposed infrastructure and Trump was so incompetent on getting any funding passed that infrastructure week became a running joke. <laughs> yeah. Right. Some of the some of the coverage, you know, Biden showed up in, in, in Pennsylvania the day of this bridge collapse. Some of the coverage suggested it would be awkward for Biden. You know, how was he going? You know, how was he going to handle this? Yeah. And, and it's just it's just unbelievable. And back to the GDP thing real quick. One of the things I noticed, it was really strange. You know, a couple of weeks ago, there was a lot of reporting on the December inflation rate uh, and, and the New York, you know, huge deal, huge, you know, uh, massively hyped. New York Times in, in its news story about the inflation rate, first sentence mentioned Joe Biden and it was bad news for the White House and bad news for Biden. GDP through the roof, highest in four decades, New York Times on Friday, there was not a single reference to Joe Biden. So when there's bad economic news, it's always cast in a very political context. This is bad news for the White yeah. House. How is he gonna recover? When there's good economic news, Joe Biden doesn't exist. Not only doesn't he get credit, yeah. it, it, he, it, it, he, you know, the administration has nothing to do with any of this. It's really heavy-handed stuff. Well, it, stuff. you know, just the hypocrisy that's so blatant, even in the Supreme Court thing now. I mean, both yeah. Reagan and Trump yeah. vowed to it, it vowed to appoint a woman. Biden yeah. said a black woman. Huh? What's different? I can't figure yeah. out what the thing is that's different. <laughs> I mean, just come out and say that you're racist. Who is it? Yeah. Wicker? What's his name? I, I don't think she, uh, she'll get one Republican vote. This is obviously affirmative action. Really? Have you yeah. seen the women on this list? This is about oh the gosh. farthest thing from affirmative action ever. But it's just like that is so racist on its face to say yeah, that. Yeah, you know. And a couple of people have pointed out, I mean, for Republicans, this is basically a pass. This isn't going to change the dynamic of the court. Right. They could just uh, they yeah. could just kind of quietly w yeah. uh, watch. They've they already all... packed the court with three illegitimate yeah, exactly. right wing whack I mean, picks. Right. Just shut you know, up for a minute. They could vote. They could vote no, but they could just quietly let Biden have, you know, this this nomination. But when you introduce the topic of race, they cannot they cannot uh they can't, can't control themselves. Yeah. They couldn't control themselves with soda my ear. The, oh, the Sean Hannity said it might be illegal. This uh, <laughs> but yeah, it might yeah. be illegal. This appointment, yeah. But, but here's the thing. So, um, you know, uh, the politics, I don't think, are going to be great for the Republican Party. It looks like the confirmation. That's what I thought. I'm like, good. Yeah, good. You you bring it on against the first black Look, woman nominee that's, that's exactly. hugely if, if, qualified. If, yeah. if the entire Republican Party wants to vote no against the first black woman to the Supreme Court weeks before the midterm, and when these nomination hearings are held, and it's and it's so obviously there's some of the brightest, smartest people on the planet, and their resumes are are are, are, are through the roof, just astounding credentials. 
if the Republican Party wants to stand up and say no, all 50 votes, you, if they want to say who they are, you know, weeks before the midterm, yeah. then that's their choice. Yeah. And and I don't think, you know, everyone thinks this, you know, the Republicans are always so savvy and they're outmaneuvering everybody. I think they're marching into a trap.